Do you want to know how to go from shooting footage like this? She was sitting, drinking her coffee, and she was so beautiful. And I say hi to her. <laughs> That's how we met. To shooting footage like this. Oh. 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 Never start with the head. The victim gets all fuzzy. He can't feel the neck. See? Well, stick around because in today's video, we're going to go over all the different types of camera angles and movements. Let's jump into it. Knowing all of the different types of camera angles and movements is crucial to be able to establish visual on-screen emotion. So without wasting any more time, let's start off with talking about all of the different ways that you can frame your subject. Let's start with the extreme wide. An extreme wide shot is used to establish a grand massive scale set or environment. This can also help make your subject appear small in relation to their surroundings. An extreme wide shot is a really good shot to use to show how alone your character is in their world. Next up we have a wide shot. Different from an extreme wide shot, a wide shot is focused on establishing a location or relative distances within your frame. Before entering a new location, you must first establish a wide shot. Next time you check out a film or a TV show, pay attention. Every time a character enters a room, you see a wide shot of the room and the character entering a room. This helps set up your character's surroundings and their relative distances. Next up, we have the cowboy shot. Made famous from Western films, the cowboy shot is framed from the head to below your subject's waist, allowing the gun or holster on their hip to be in frame. Next up, we have a medium shot. Medium shots are one of the most common angles and can be used for a variety of different reasons, from dialogue to action. Next up, we have a bust shot. A bust shot is framed from the subject's head to the lower chest. This allows your subject to be larger in frame, demanding closer attention from the viewer and allows your subject to convey subtle emotions. A bust shot is a really good neutral or starting point for implementing a camera movement like a slide or a dolly, either pushing closer to your subject or pulling away a little bit farther. Which brings us to our next type of framing, the close-up. Close-up shots are when your subject takes up the majority of real estate within your frame. This allows for massive emotion and intimate connection from the viewer. And then following the close-up, we have the extreme close-up. An extreme close-up focuses on showcasing a specific detail of your subject. It's important to be careful when using these because the subject you're showing in close-up detail absolutely has to be crucial and important to the story. Now that we've determined your subject's framing, we need to determine what angle to shoot at in order to capture the emotion. First up, we have the straight-on or center framing. These are the most basic of camera angles, but that's not to say it's boring or ineffective. Center framing has a very specific purpose, to isolate your character from the happenings in their surroundings. This makes your character feel alone or in their own world. This can either have a positive or negative connotation, depending on the context of the scene. The most visually pleasing way to execute these shots is with a symmetrical background. Next up, we have the over the shoulder. An over the shoulder shot is the most common angle used for dialogue scenes. The concept is very simple. You position your camera behind the backside of the listener subject, angle the lens towards the subject delivering the lines, and frame the listener's shoulder in the bottom corner of the frame. Now, depending on what focal length your lens is, the distance between your subjects will vary. One thing you really need to take note of when shooting an over-the-shoulder shot or really properly utilizing on-set blocking is knowing the 180-degree rule. When filming an over-the-shoulder shot or any kind of back and forth exchange between characters or subjects, basically, this rule helps establish and maintain relative character positions and distances within the environment or frame. It's very important to follow this. Essentially, you're gonna wanna draw a big imaginary line on the floor of your set or stage. Now take your characters or subjects, place them on the line. This next part is the most important. You need to pick one side of the line to keep your camera positioned at, and you must not cross the line at all. You can move your camera as you wish on that side of the line, but you cannot cross it, or it will confuse the viewer by taking them out of the scene. Next up, we have the low angle tilt. A low angle tilt is pretty much what it sounds like. For a low angle tilt, you're gonna wanna put the camera low to the ground and angle it up towards the subject. This positions the viewer to be lower than the subject, making the subject appear powerful, confident, or heroic. 
and then contrasting the low angle tilt, we have the high angle tilt, which works in the exact opposite way. You position the camera high above the subject and angle it down towards them. This makes your subject appear small, cowardly, afraid, or less than. Next up, we have the two shot. A two shot is simple. It's when two characters or subjects are framed and in focus simultaneously, usually each placed on an upper thirds mark. Next up, we have the Dutch angle or the sideways tilt. A Dutch angle is a really fun shot to execute as there are many different creative ways that you can do this one. Essentially, you just angle your camera a bit to the side. There's no particular direction necessary. This shot evokes a sense of danger or uneasiness, like something bad is about to happen. Having the camera tilted is an uncomfortable visual for the viewer as it should be an uncomfortable situation for your subject or character. Next up, we have the aerial shot. An aerial shot is usually filmed with either a drone or in a helicopter. These are usually used when establishing a larger scale location like a city. And then lastly, we have the point of view. A point of view shot is usually filmed with some kind of body rig or head rig that mounts the camera to the subject. This allows the viewer to momentarily be in the subject's shoes to see an event or scene from their perspective. This also allows for an alternate understanding of a scene from the perspective of another character. A fun way to implement a POV shot in terms of actually using it to tell a story is you would, you would write and shoot a scene one way and the meaning of the scene would be one thing and you would receive one message from the scene and you would receive one message from the scene as a viewer. Then later in your film, you can cut back to that moment, show it from another character's perspective, and receive an entirely different message, an entirely different meaning of that scene, progressing your story further and taking a different turn. So now that we have determined our subject's frame size and their placement within the frame, we need to determine how we're gonna actually move the camera around them to evoke every emotion that we need to. This is also important for keeping your shots dynamic and interesting. First up, let's start with the camera pan. This term is commonly misunderstood as people seem to think that panning is just moving the camera in any direction. It's not, it's actually very specific. A proper camera pan is when the camera is locked on a tripod or fixed point and moved on a horizontal axis. A vertical axis is considered a tilt up or down and physically moving the camera from the fixed point is considered a slide. The movement allows for a more natural shift from one subject to another without cutting or showcasing an environment. Next up, we have the camera slide. A slide is when the camera is physically moved, either on rails, gimbal, or even handheld. This is another common way to add dimension to your shot and shift from one subject to another in a more natural and calm manner. Next up, we have the tilt. A camera tilt is done on a tripod from a fixed point spanning across the vertical axis only. This is a really common movement to use for revealing something in your shot. Next up, we have the push or pull. A push or pull is different from a zoom and is arguably one of the most commonly used movements in film. You can use many different rigging methods to achieve this. Steadicam, rails, dolly, gimbal, or even handheld. This pulls your viewer closer to the subject for intimacy or push them away in a cold solitude or ejection. Now let's talk about the crane. Different from a tilt, crane shot physically moves the camera along the vertical axis and is another way to show reveals in a more location-based manner. These are most commonly executed with a camera crane or jib or even a drone shot depending on how high you're actually lifting it up. Next up is a tracking shot. A tracking shot is used to follow or track the movement of the subject within your frame. This shot is used to make the viewer feel like they're right alongside the character and are being included in the scene. This is commonly achieved using a Steadicam, Dolly, or Gimbal, or sometimes even handheld for a more kinetic or energetic effect. Now, this one's a really fun one. Let's talk about the orbit. An orbit shot covers your entire subject 360 degrees by moving the camera around the subject, using them as the axis of rotation. 
This is used to make the viewer feel a little bit disoriented or to give sort of an in the moment type of like revelation kind of feeling. This is also commonly achieved using a Steadicam, Dolly, or a gimbal. Now this next one is a little bit more of a stylistic shot and we're gonna talk about the roll. The camera roll is a bit more of a complex shot as it's usually paired with a second movement, like a push or a pull. This is when the camera physically rotates in the way of a barrel roll, completely flipping the camera and the frame upside down. This is another really useful tool for disorienting your viewer in a stylistic fashion. And then lastly, of course, we're gonna talk about the dolly zoom. The dolly zoom, or vertigo effect as some people call it, is another complex shot made famous by Alfred Hitchcock's 1958 film titled Vertigo. A dolly zoom utilizes both a dolly and simultaneously zooming your lens. The trick here is to physically push the camera forward while zooming out with your lens, or vice versa. The effect will push your background away from the subject while your subject remains at the same distance in the foreground. The difficult part isn't really moving the camera and zooming, it's zooming and focusing at the same time. This is another really interesting way for disorienting your viewer in more of a stylistic choice, usually in some sort of like deep character revelation or epiphany. Now, if you want to actually learn how to implement these shots, stay tuned for our next video because I'm going to actually go over how to compile them into a shot list so that these ideas become an executable task when you're on set filming. And as always, thank you for watching.